YouTube, we're going blue color fam. Welcome back to another episode of Morning Headlines. Today is a Wednesday. Um, today is what? The 5th of April 2023. All right, so time really a fly. All right, so what we want to do is to get through this morning headlines quick and fast without any glitches, hopefully. All right, hopefully we do not have any glitches so we can just get through morning headlines as quick and as fast as possible. So let me get the lights on and let us get into morning headlines. All right. So, as you know, morning headlines is governed by two matters. Number one, money never sleep. Number two, early bird catches the most worm. And as a result of that, we are up early in the morning. Um, it's like two o'clock in the morning. All right. So we're going to scour through the major headlines of the major news media. That's the written news media. I'm talking the Gleaner. I'm talking the Observer. All right. We're going to look through those and I'm going to break down, analyze if so be the case. Whatever headline, whatever article I think may be of importance to you and your investment journey heading into today's trading activities on the jamaica stock exchange all right so with that said let us get right into morning headlines now i am on the gleaners website and the first headlines that i'm seeing on the gleaners website is cornerstones roots deep among ja's top tier cornerstone roots deep among ja top tier what is this saying now the last time i think there was some news about barita in the financial gleaner barita has restructured the company all right so i think barita will be delisted from the jamaica stock exchange and what they will list is a holding company a cornerstone holding company all right now that is a regulatory um activity by the boj where the boj is saying that if you're a group all of the subsidiaries that the boj regularly is the boj wants to ensure that they are under one umbrella all right so the boj has ordered that um any financial subsidiary any business that it regulates need to hold all of its subsidiaries in one group all right so because of that cornerstone is planning on listing a holding group and that will entail all right or that will hold barita and other cornerstone subsidiary all right so <clears throat> here's a an article about cornerstone what is this saying the privately held cornerstone group which recently received the green light from central bank to reorganize into and seek a license as a financial holding company has valued itself just shy of 1 billion us dollar or 152 billion jamaican dollar uh, which would place it in top tier of jamaica's financial conglomerates based on book value all right so this is good news for um who will this be good news for though i mean this is good news for barita shareholders i mean um what will happen is that if you're a shareholder of barita you will be returning those shares all right and you will receive shares of a holding company all right and this holding company is valued will be valued at some one billion um us dollar or 150 billion jamaican dollar all right and as a result of that they're saying look barry um cornerstone is in the top tier of jamaicans um jamaican conglomerate all right so this will put the company um in in comparison to a grace kennedy i think in um with comparison to ncb and those 
high valued company let me read on to see what exactly is this article saying the valuation of 920 million us dollar has recorded in cornerstone's financial statement up to september 2022 does not include mjr real estate holding limited uh, which is held off balance sheet and was one of two companies boj told cornerstone holding jamaica it has to bring onto the books for its financial holding company application to advance all right so this is telling you now um the story that we got about cornerstone and uh, it is seeking license from the boj all right now it gets a green light um it is approved by one committee of the boj but they're saying that that approval does not say that they will get a license to operate as a holding company all right now the boj had some objections to cornerstone application of becoming a holding company in that the boj has, um, is saying that uh, there were two subsidiaries that were not a part of the uh, um the um the application that cornerstone sent to boj all right mjr is one and that is the recent real estate company that cornerstone set up the recent real estate subsidiary of cornerstone all right the bank of jamaica is saying that mjr real estate holding should be a part of the holding company all right because it's a finance company it is regulated by the boj so they should not even though it's kept off balance sheet of a cornerstone all right balance sheet the boj is saying that should be a part of the entire thing all right so we do not know whether or not um cornerstone will get the go ahead to operate as a holding company um while mjr and this other company is outside um the periphery of um cornerstone holding company but we will keep a top of that to see what is happening however this article is saying that so far cornerstone the value of cornerstone is huge is huge all right so the group's net assets have hovered at six um 566 million us dollar when the business saw a portion of cornerstone's um, financial statement including segments relating to its asset value and covering the investment vehicles the jamaica registered cornerstone financial uh, which is registered in barbados the size of cornerstone book valuation is remarkable for the fact that it was launched only seven years ago by founder and ceo paul simpson chairman mark myers among a dozen or so core investors whose first significant venture was the acquisition of a small merchant bank fourth fifth of the group's assets are held by cornerstone's financial four out of five four fifth all right so cornerstone financial all of four fifth of the group's asset the barbados entity which itself holds a mind a majority stake in barita investment cornerstone united holds the assets of the investment bank mf and g merchant bank the group acquires 80 percent of mf and g merchant bank then owned by the law partner myers fletcher and gordon in 2016 cornerstone acquired the remainder 20 percent in 2019 so here cornerstone making moves all right this is a good look the group's next big move was in 2018 when the barbados base vehicle was used to acquire roughly 75 percent of barita investment then a private company controlled by the founder rita humphrey it was a private company that was this is a mistake it was a public company all right barita was not a private company when they purchased it or am i wrong <laughs> i'm not sure but i could swear barita was a publicly listed company when they purchased it all right so barita was listed in a major ipo and a sharp rise in its share price on the market amid 
two rights issued are goodwill for Cornerstone Financial, according to the Cornerstone Financial statement by the Windsor Business, the company valued its Barita investment using the company's stock price on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Barita's market capitalization at the time of the audited account approximately. 604 million US dollar. In a sense, Cornerstone combined companies are worth more than any large financial conglom um, conglomerate. For instance, the net asset um, base on the net asset basis, NCB Financial Group with capital 100 and 72 billion dollar in capital or about 1.1 billion us dollar was about twice as large as cornerstone while sagicore group jamaica uh, with 116 billion dollars in capital or roughly 760 million dollar as of december 2022 is by a same measure a third bigger Scotia Group with a one hundred and five billion dollar or a billion dollar year yeah, or six hundred and ninety five um, million US dollar has twenty three percent more in net assets. However, JMMB Group with a forty eight billion dollar or about three hundred and seventeen billion um, a million US dollar in net asset and proven group with one hundred and forty million dollar among others are by the same measure smaller than cornerstone all right no um what it seems look at look at this JMB selling at forty four billion dollar just the other day JMB was selling at about seventy billion dollar 84 billion dollars thereabouts so it seems like jmb is at a good price say no more all right however what this article is saying that look it is assuming that cornerstone will get the license from boj cornerstone will start operate um as a holding company and this will put cornerstone with the big boys all right so ncb it will put it among ncb um Sagicore group also what we talk about scotia bank all right those will be larger than cornerstone but cornerstone will definitely be larger than the jmb group and proven um investment however i think jmb group and proven investment are supposed to restructure and become a holding company also i'm not sure about that but let that be as it may so structuring the company in a group will take time and requires approval from the courts and shareholders all right so this is just one of those um should i say marketing strategy one of those um pr public relation thing where cornerstone is getting the information out so investors can become more familiar with the cornerstone group all right because you will be a shareholder of a cornerstone group if it is that you do not sell your barita shares and you're allowed to get some cornerstone group in um exchange for your barita shares tiktok fired um find 15.9 million dollars by uk watchdog over misuse of kids data all right so since of lately we are seeing we are a lot of times tiktok is now in the media tiktok is now under pressure by the western um government all right so the other day obviously we're u.s there was some story about tiktok and u.s u.s government is saying that some private company some private people need to purchase um tiktok all right they, they are proposing that tiktok be purchased by um private people um or some government agency over here um the issue is that they are they, they have some issue with the tiktok and data sharing with the chinese government tiktok is a chinese owned company all right operates a lot in the western hemisphere so where tiktok is a thing it's a staple in the western hemisphere but the thing is there are a lot of data that tiktok collect from collects from individual and america government believes that tiktok is sharing these information with the chinese government and as a result of that there is some political issue um i believe 
yeah as i said there's some agency in the united states that is proposing that tiktok sell out all right to some american investors so they can have um larger control over the information that tiktok is gathering and here now we're seeing we're in the united um united kingdom a watchdog all right um they are finding tiktok some 15.9 million dollars for misuse of kids data all right so let us just get quick and let us just read that headline and move on so tiktok find 15.9 million dollars by uk watchdog over misuse of kids data london um britain's private watchdog hit tiktok uh, with a multi million dollar penalty yesterday for misusing children data and violating other protections for younger users for um, personal data all right so that is it people who use tiktok should be aware of the implication uh, should be aware of the data that you are giving to these people there's not any there's a bit of uncertainty as it relates to the use of those data all right so u.s chip control threatens china technology technology ambition so again the geopolitical tension between u.s and china is showing up here as it relates to this story um so chip is 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 that little thing that goes into most um most things that are made now most equipment all right the last time the control of chip chip was in shortage and as a result of that we see where um there wasn't a lot of cars being made so used car people would have to turn to used car all right and as a result of that used car price shoot up um to a greater amount than even well new cars all right so that was one of the issue the shortages of trip was a problem so now they are saying that the u.s has control over trip and as a, as a result of that it threatens china technic, um, technology ambition so let us just quickly get into the story and we can do this very quick and fast and move on to some local stories all right so furious at u.s effort that cuts off access to technology to make advanced computer chip all right china um, china's leaders appear to be struggling to figure out how to retaliate without hurting their own ambitious ambitions in telecoms artificial intelligence and other industries all right so here they're saying that the u.s cut off access to technology to make advanced computer chip all right so it seems like what what had happened i know that a lot of those chips are made in china all right but what it what it looks like here is that even though china makes some um most of those chips the the, the process the um the the building process is dependent on america in some way shape or form so as a result of that america was able to cut off access to certain technology and as a result the uh, china is unable to develop adequate amount of chip all right so chinese president go um uh, chinese government sees that the chip uh, that are used in every um thing um from phone to kitchen applicants um appliances to finger jet all right as crucial asset in its a strategic rivalry with washington an effort to gain wealth and global influence chips are the center of technology war china has its own chip found um foundries but they supply only low-end processors used in autos and appliances thus um, the the u.s government starting under then president donald trump is cutting off access to a growing array of tools to make chips for computer servers ai and other advanced application japan and the netherlands have joined the limiting access to technology they say might be used to make weapons all right so japan is in on this um, um on this um scarcity drive against china all right because they're saying china can use a chip to make 
um, weapon that can be used against them. All right, Netherland is in on this also. All right, so it's a geopolitical tension. These things normally happen. These things continue to happen. All right, so we will keep a top of that to see how that will go. Now, if America, as I said, China really process these trips and make these trips, but it, it um the, the story is saying it depends on tools from the United States to do to make to develop these trips. All right, now if it is a case where US is limiting the access to certain tools to develop those trips, we can look down the road in very short term to see that chip will become short again so we are seeing where there might be some shortages of chips once again as a result of that this might affect inflation because we see where this affected the price of appliances the price of cars all right and as a result of that people start using the new the older cars and the car price increasing so we might this is this is telling us that there is a, a risk to inflation all right, and I tell you what inflation means, how that will impact the industry, how that will impact the stock prices um, and the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We are waiting to see inflation behind us, but it seems like there is risk to the upside. So we will keep a top of that to see exactly how that will impact our day-to-day -day operation and our trading on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Digital payback. All right, so Grace Kennedy, the Jamaican conglomerate whose business spans supermarket to financial service has invested more than $1 billion in the digitization of the service over the last three years. All right, so here, Grace Kennedy. Grace Kennedy is this big conglomerate. A lot of people like Grace Kennedy. A lot of people love Grace Kennedy. All right, but see where Gary Kennedy is doing some investment, automating some service, some processes. All right, so this is a good look. Um, is it that Grace Kennedy ran out of capital project and is now turning to um, digitize, um, digitization of its services to increase, um, increase its net profit all right now how much will this affect the company's net profit the jamaican conglomerate whose business span supermarket to financial service has invested more than one billion dollar in digitization of its services over the last three years which according to the ceo is helping all right it's helping the company to reach its objective or its goal all right so we're not I, I i really have to sign in every now and then i get kicked out of i get kicked out of the cleaner all right even though i'm registered and i subscribe to the cleaner all right so which is helping um where am i i'm not seeing the story quick and fast let me get to the story i'm registered why does this really happen every single morning this happened all right just bear with me for a few let me see how i can best navigate this quick and fast all right so i'm supposed to register All right, so here Grace Kennedy investing some one billion dollar. That's a lot of money in the digital processes. All right, we're yet to see how this will impact the company, impact the company's operation, impact the company um, profit going forward. All right, but this thing is not taking my. All right, so the stock market loses five billion dollar on Monday. <laughs> Yo, and we're still on the Gleaners website. The Gleaners reporting a five billion dollar loss in terms of value from the stock market, the local market. Yo, yo. The stock market is still bleeding. All right, now I talked to you about the inflationary um, issues that the 
um, the, 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 the companies are listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange are facing, all right? We are not out the hoods. You see where the BOJ has um, ceased increasing interest rate, which is a good thing, which is telling us that there is some amount of light ahead, uh, um, ahead of the tunnel, but we are still not out the hoods. It's still dark days yet. So let me see what this is saying. All right, so the Jamaica Stock Exchange now hovering at just above pandemic lows following its slide on Monday that wiped out $5 billion in market value. So there is some amount of uncertainty. I do not know what is happening. As I said, we just read about the trip and the political um the political issue the geographic tension that is building up as it relates to trip trip normally leads to higher inflation the shortages of trip normally lead to higher inflation i tell you we are watching the inflation um the inflation margin we are watching the inflation lever to decide when to invest again in the jamaica market however we are seeing where investors are pulling money out of the market i do not know what's happening all right so suffering its biggest day of losses in at least 12 months to the start of the new quarter the depreciation pushed the index to 1.5 percent above crash levels of 2020 all right so remember 2020 i think the stock market fell some tw over 20 percent all right so the market crashes uh crashed on um in 2020 all right a lot of people lose a lot of money then um after the pandemic after the lockdown restriction things never really normalized but things was um were looking better and the stock were coming back up then the inflation is another thing that held the stock down all right but for some reason monday saw some five billion dollar bleeding from the stock market and they are saying we are down back to the pandemic level all right just 1.5 percent above where it was in 2020 in the heights of the pandemic so we are still suffering so the jamaica stock exchange market continues to suffer from interest rate adjustment which allow investors to make solid return risk-free by holding government paper the preference of the U.S. and Jamaican equity markets were influenced by a more restrictive monetary policy by their central bank. All right, indicated by um, um indicated uh, the Bank of Jamaica in the recent release that all right. So they are saying that um the Fed is more restrictive in terms of its monetary policy, which is true. We so see we are as I said before the boj has keep and um, kept interest rate stable all right so that is telling that's some good news for investors we are still not out the hoods as i tell you we are still there's still uncertainty to, to the upside in terms of inflation so i don't know what is really happening the bank the central bank across the world have increased the benchmark interest rate to cool inflation which rose in response to u.s printing of money but also supply chain bottlenecks uh, that rock, um rocket a uh, rocketed um uh, shipping and commodity prices all right so in jamaica the boj increased uh, interest rate of 14 fold from 0.5 percent to 7 percent since september 2021 in a series of rate movement what is happening on the jamaica stock exchange so they are saying look it is the movements of interest rate that is causing the stock prices to drop that is causing the market to lose its bottom all right but that said, the combined index lost 0.01% of its value on Tuesday. So the slide continues on Tuesday. On Tuesday the slide in 2.66% on Monday, which wiped out $5 billion in value of the market worth roughly $1.9 trillion. The last time the market dipped close to that quantum was 2.4% on January 4, 2023 and 2% 2 on May 24, 2023. 22 all right so on the day heavy <laughs> decline market monday's trading session with uh, 53 stocks 
<clears throat> declining and 35 advancing for instance 11 stock declined by more than 10 percent leading the decline was isp financials and j PS preference share both down 21% for just one day. All right, so earlier in the, um, the year, brokerage firm NCB Capital Market warned client to expect volatility in the year due to interest rate movements but the jamaica is keeping interest rates steady what is happening furthermore despite expectation for the peak both inflation and interest rates are expected to remain elevated relative to historical and target levels for much of the year against the background uh, we recommend that investors focus on assets in defensive sectors value stocks and growth stocks with strong outlooks including generating opportunities alternative and diversification so this this is advisor from NCB. They are saying, look, defensive stock, you need to get your money in stocks that are not falling off in terms of what's happening um, due to what's happening in the, the economy. You want stocks that are sturdy, that can um, ride out the, the, the volatility of the economy without losing a lot of money. You want value stock also. These are stock that have a great future, that are looking great um, in terms of their um, future projections in terms of revenue or whether their values are low they, they have fall off in terms of their value already all right they are large companies that are sturdy all right that will increase in value as soon as the economy gets over this bump and things are looking better they also are recommending growth stocks all right with strong outlook all right they also said diversify your portfolio go into alternative investment and look to generate income or um, income generating activity that is uh, companies that are paying lots of dividends that is bonds uh, that will be, um, um shed off a certain amount of cash over time these are some of the advice by ncb capital market so growth um, stocks are fast growing companies mainly on the junior market and value stocks are firms with large balance sheets on the main market the financial gleaner sent queries to four brokerage houses for comment but did not get a reply at print deadline all right so because of what's happening yo this is it whenever time the stock market is not doing so good a lot of people tend not to talk about it vloggers and, and, and youtube tend not to want to cover the stock market people in general tend to um, turn a blind eye on the stock market they do not look at what's happening because a lot of people cannot stomach up the losses all right so over five billion dollars in just one day specifically the 2.66 percent dip on the jamaica stock exchange combined index to 343,122 points hovered at 1.6 percent above the low point of around 337,500 points on march 25 2020 that's the onset of the pandemic when everything was heading south at the onset of the pandemic apparently uh, comparatively uh, the index uh, which is now 35 percent below august 2019 peak of that all right so to me when i see these things what i say is that opportunity 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 abounds all right opportunity there no other time to invest i mean we are not out the hoods or continent to say that anything can happen more as the stock can as the market can fall off even further all right so there's no guarantee in investment however we think value is in this market i did a video just um today talking about um the junior market all right and how it closed today all right currently we see where the junior market pe is some 11.2 x all right normally as i said the junior market PE is in the high teens or in the low 20s all right so to me opportunity exists on the junior market opportunity exists on the main market the 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 the, 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 the article is confirming that 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 uh, we're back to we're back down to the 2020 crash levels in terms of market value all right so that is something that we have to look out for cac 200 strike partnership to fix 
losses. All right. So faced with the first quarter loss and peaks and trouts in its revenue flows, here conditioning company CAS2 2000 Limited has struck a deal with Real Market out of Trinidad and Tobago to represent Crown Limit. All right. So here. Um, they are saying that the here condition in company um there's high volatility in terms of its revenue however it has struck a deal um with some company in trinidad and tobago that might guarantee some work for them which might see them having um some steady growth so gia abraham ceo described crown as a global economy all right where am i as a global company that has distribution com um, companies in different parts or different partners in the Caribbean. Grow Equipment is a US-based global company that offers forklift, um, palletizers and other warehouse equipment. CAC 2000 will be operating in partnership with Real Marketing to explore other possibilities such as evaluate, um, elevator repair and the servicing of Crown equipment as part of a package. Some of their large customers here are actually our customers and so I see it as a complementary service that we can marry with what we presently offer. Alright, so hopefully, let me see if they make any projection as to how that will impact their financial going forward. Alright, so she says, and I think they are talking about the CEO, some people in, in, in some great position in the company. She says the sales team at CAC 2000 will be moving to add um, the servicing of Crown equipment to the suit of services of the company offer. Abraham is looking to the new revenue stream as a way to feed better revenue flows for the fourth quarter ending January 2022, um, 3 CA2 2000 suffered a loss. Abraham sees the situation as temporary and that there was a reduction in the number of projects in the, com um, the company's pipeline. So this company is really facing it and it is good that they are able to forge some relationship that will see them having more business, doing more business and hopefully they will get it right. All right. so. We're still on the Gleaners website. We're seeing the Elf Minister. Um, what are they saying? This is business news. What's happening? All right, so Health Shop. All right, so Health Shop United Kingdom Health Service Provider Cambridge University Hospital has been seeking to recruit registered nurses and midwives for a full-time qualified nursing position in all clinical areas across the hospital. All right, so it seems like, again, our nurses, our health, um, our health sector will get hit, all right, because um, other economies are trading away or buying our nurses and our um, health professionals. All right, so that's a thing. Ah, ah yo, something we have to look into. Uh, maybe, maybe the government could look at it as just like oh we comes a boom and we're saying skill workers go overseas on farm work and all these things i think them for three nurses and just send them overseas i mean and do the same thing like your yeah, export labor all right somebody suggested that some time ago and i think them really need to look into that that could be some source of revenue for the government you know what i mean in terms of taxes and all these things so pay better now we're on the observer website pay better we're seeing um who is this now um the pioj um ceo um siaga metro siaga is on the front page let me see what they are talking about and Harbin Hill is there also. So Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce Harbin Hill is calling on Jamaican employers to pay their employees better as part of the effort to stem the migration of skilled labor and to attract and keep workers to avert a, cr a crisis that is threatening to contain and the continued economic growth. All right. So 
just the other day in the budget debate we see where the government comes to boom and them raise a uh, minimum wage which is a good look but a lot of people saying it could be better all right and uh, like Metro Siaga said, I heard him um, giving a speech on this, giving his thought on the rising in um, in the minimum wage, and he's saying that it's a delicate balance that the government has to maintain. All right, because if it raise rate too much, if it raise the wages too much, then it means um, the cost of doing business will get higher, and that can spell disaster for the economy. All right, so the government has to raise rate but still um keep it in our at a level where companies can operate profitable or uh, profitably all right now here we see where harbin hill the ministry of the minister of industry and investment is saying look the, go um, the jamaican government in the private sector jamaican employees should take it up on themselves i mean the jamaican employers should take it up on themselves and pay the people them better because there is a form of a labor crisis i just spoke about that this is where nurses and housewives are, are um, heading overseas because they are getting better pay all right so a lot of skill workers out here are failing to perform any job any at all and as a result of that we hear minister prime minister touting to import labor all right so that's a thing though they're saying the problem is the pay the pay grade is too small too low and as a result of that people with skill are not willing and able to do not willing to do the work at uh, that low grade so i think i think the government is um doing some moral persuasion trying to convince the employers locally to pay more money and to get the economy buzzing once more digital debt talk extended digital have some problem digital have some problem and it seems like digital is not able to get out of this one all right so let us quickly review this digital thing to see what's happening so digital has now until the end of this month to formalize a restructuring agreement with creditors uh, which would recapitalize the company and place it on a firm and sustainable footing for the future a uh, digital was unable to repay some debt when it have however we see where digital is planning to restructure those debt don't know what the plan is is it that they're gonna pay the debt i mean are, are they gonna delay payment are they gonna give the the, the bond holders a haircut i do not know but let us quickly read through this to see what digital is up to the jamaican based techco and telco make the announcement friday as the next step in that restructuring discussion it is having with the creditors that would see 1.8 billion us dollar of borrowing or about 40 percent written off as bond holders swap much of its debt for equity all right so the, the the deal is that boom them owe 1.8 million dollar and they are not able to pay that but they must say yo yeah here we give us some equity stake in the company all right so uh, creditors that that's a deal that they they want to track all right where they get some equity stake for the debt the money that digital cannot repay all right but we are talking about 40 percent 40 percent of what all right so it look like digital is unable to pay 40 percent of what is owed so as a result of that the government and the the creditors are saying give us give us equity steel for that so written off as shareholders swap that for that so two other categories of bond holders will end up writing off most of their combined for, um 640 million in million us dollar invested that will see digital founder take in the entity falling from over 90 percent to as low as 10 percent all right so it seems the come um, the creditors are acting like a vulture they are taking over the digital um operation and the founder will be left with just 10 percent of digital equity stake all right 
Now I remember once, I can't remember, it was about 2013, I saw Digicel paying out some dividends to, um, to the founder, all right, and they paid out some one billion Jamaican dollar. I think that 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 payout of dividend would have returned all of the money that Brian, what's his name? Then it's um, Brian O'Brien O'Brien would have invested in Digicel. All right, so it is not a loss for him. He's losing some of the equity stake in the company, a lot of the equity stake, almost all of his equity stake. However, I believe he has made a lot of return on that initial investment in Digicel. So let us read Digicel enter the restructuring after not having enough money to pay $1.3 billion of bond that were due at the start of March. Creditors initially granted it um, it a 30 day grace period to March 30 to secure a wider agreement on borrowing. Or, however, at the expiry of the period last Thursday, this is announced it reached an agreement with principal, our uh, principal on a key reach an agreement in principle of key terms of the debt restructuring with creditors holding 75 percent of its debt uh, with not enough time to complete the discussion before the March 30 day date an agreement was reached for a 15 day extension to hammer out the fine details of the amendment that were proposed that first a 15 day period um, can then be extended by another 15 day period if necessary all right so digital here buying a lot of time do not want to face the music do not want to give up um, almost 80 percent of the business of the equity stake of ownership however if you're unable to pay the creditors you will have to give up um, that amount of stake that's the deal so the extension of the grace period will facilitate the finalization of definitive documents arising from constructive and ongoing discussion an ad hoc group of so-called crossover bondholders who hold a large portion of various categories of digital debt have also agreed to back the restructuring. All right, so most of the creditors getting on board looking to back the restructuring deal and said, yeah, here we, we need to take away the company from the owner. All right, so we are still here on the business um, the Jamaica Observer, we are talking about some, we are seeing some business social, all right? Business social, you don't know business social, Mr. Like a Bob's Grage there. Mm, Red Stripe hosted official launch of the 2.2 seller expansion. Now we talk about Red Stripe um, adding to its capacity, its production capacity, spending some $2.2 billion in capital to, to, to add to the seller expansion where it can produce more beer. And we're saying that if Red Stripe is producing more beer, adding that amount of money to production, it seems that in the short term, they're expecting consumer um, confidence to increase. They're expecting consumer spending to increase. All right, so that's a good look for uh, the economy however we're seeing where there is risk to the upside there's risk to the upside in terms of the inflation numbers all right in terms of the shortages of trip that might um might manifest itself all right because we see where the political the geopolitical tension between um china and america is playing out Japan is a part of that. Japan is siding with America. Netherland is also siding with America. All right. So what will happen is that Amer um, the Chinese will be unable to make these trips, which are essential input and essential input to the, 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 the to cars, to new cars, to kitchen equipment, to other equipment. And as a result of that, we might see prices increasing all right no that would be a bad thing for the economy we we'll see where the stock market on monday lost some 2.6 percent all right and according to the the gleaner the stock market is back down to the 2020 low that's the at the onset of the coronavirus when the stock market lost over 20 percent of its value 
all right so you can interpret this anyway all right some people will interpret this as look problem is ahead all right and we are not out the hoods as yet there there are lots of volatility to come and uh, some people will interpret this as opportunity to buy into the stock market and wait all right this is not financial advice we are not advising you as to what to do but we are just telling you as it is grace kennedy completes kosher insurance takeover all right so we just talk about grace kennedy spending some billion one billion dollar to digitize some processes all right and now grace kennedy is back in the news again this time grace kennedy is purchasing kosher insurance what is happening why is kosher selling off the insurance company did not scotia buy an insurance um harm from from ncb all right so when ncb was planning on buying guardian holding i thought they sell something to scotia one bag of mix up but here grace kennedy is buying something from scotia let me just quickly tap onto uh, the story to see what the story is about all right so grace kennedy has completed its acquisition of scotia insurance um, caribbean limited and uh, has announced that it will rename the entity to gk life yo grace kennedy making move all right so grace kennedy recently purchased um what was it key insurance all right so key insurance was one of those companies that were um that was going under all right the company really needed some capital injection gk was there they gave it the capital injection take over that grace kennedy also started a, a, a holy one subsidiary um in the insurance sector also i think they sell general insurance canopy all right so grace kennedy is heading full speed ahead um in terms of insurance so they are looking to build out a total insurance um harm of the company all right so grace kennedy will now do food and finance all these things so let us see what they are hope to if we can see uh, um identify any direction any strategy any opportunity in the way grace kennedy is strategizing so the entity uh, will be in 12 markets across the region don webby ceo grace kennedy told the jamaica observer uh 13th market st Mar uh, martin uh, will be added shortly all right so maybe it's a regional reach that the this kosha group um insurance harm has why they are interested in it so grace kennedy life currently serve several caribbean markets uh, um, namely antigua anguilla and bermuda dominica grenada st kitts and nevis st lucia st vincent and the grenadines it will now also offer credit protection insurance in the five territories where um scotia operated mainly barbados belize um british virgin island cayman island and the turks and caicos there will be no changes uh, to existing customer policies associated with the acquisition all right so no changes there they will just take that and fold it up in what they're doing so a and m mergers and acquisition continue to be a key strategic driver of growth for our group as that we move forward achieving our 2030 vision our merger and acquisition unit is in discussion regarding several merger and acquisition transactions locally and internationally and that we are looking forward to what the future has in store all right so here they're saying it is a mergers and acquisition they will see them buying up other company because this is a part of their strategy a part of the 23rd strategy that they are employing all right so look out for grace kennedy doing more of the same thing in august 2023 uh 2022 grace kennedy announced that, that they have come to an agreement with the scotia bank to acquire 100 percent of scotia insurance um Caribbean Limited, uh, with the associated transaction being subject to regulatory approval and other customary closing conditions. All right, so Grace Kennedy exposing its strategy there, uh, moving ahead, full speed ahead in what it's doing. All right, so JMMB Group completes FHC reorganization. All right, so um, as 
we were reading about the cornerstone restructuring all right and i tell her that um i think um jmmb is supposed to um go through similar restructuring also all right so let me read in this thing to see what uh, in this particular article to see what grace can um jmmb is up to all right so jmmb group has completed its group restructuring to separate its Jamaican regulatory financial subsidiaries from its non-regulatory subsidiaries as it awaits licensing from the Bank of Jamaica for its financial holding company, subsidiary, company, subsidiary. All right, so um, here it is. They are supposed to go through the same thing and do one of those restructuring thing. All right, so it is some mandatory thing by the Bank of Jamaica for the financial companies to incorporate all their subsidiaries, all their off-balance sheet subsidiaries um, into a holding company. So this was done pursuant of the Banking Service Act of 2014, uh, which gave the BOJ consolidated supervisory um, supervision of financial entities within a group that includes a deposit taking institution the restructuring was done through its new subsidiary um, JMMB financial holy limited following the receipt of a non-objection by the BOJ as a result um, JMMB FH is now the direct parent of JMMB Bank, JMMB Money Transfer, JMMB Broker, and its wholly owned subsidiary insurance company. Um, all right, so it is the same thing. JMMB Real Estate Holding and the Capital. That I'm not seeing. Will JMMB delist? I'm not. I'm not seeing that. Like Barita is delisting, and then Cornerstone will list. The JMMB disclosure noted that the restructuring exercise is aimed at harmonizing the group's overall corporate structure for its local and overseas holding. All right, so JMMB FH has applied to the Bank of Jamaica to be licensed as a financial holding company pursuant of the 20 that JMB Group subsidiary JMB International Limited, which directly owned the 23.33% stake in Sajiko Financial Group, was listed in its 2024 annual report as a company to be regulated in the future by the Barbados Financial Service Commission. The group continues to work with regulation um, terms in Jamaica and overseas as it pursue the restructuring exercise in respect of its overseas companies and will provide further updates as appropriate um, to our stakeholders of the outcome of this existence. I'm looking to see what will happen in terms of their um, continuous listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. All right. I'm not seeing anything about that. All right, so it's a thing, it's a thing, it's a thing. I'm not seeing anything about that. It's a long story. All right, so the story um, went into other companies that went through the same restructuring deal. All right, you're talking about Cornerstone here, they're mentioning Cornerstone also and they're mentioning Barita. As a result of the non-objected that, I will assume the assets of that. This is a long story, all right? And not too much information. JMB Vertex partner with a DBJ um, to fund SMEs. All right, so JMB Securities Limited through the private equity solution Vertex SME Holding recently secured additional funding from the Development Bank of Jamaica and this they will use to strengthen SMEs going forward and online to SMEs. The pioneering manufacturing distributor story. All right, so here is a story that we need to read um, and it is in The Observer. All right, so that's a good read. You can read and see how a, co um, a company um, grew from a very tiny to some huge distributor. All right, affording compliance with data. We are not interested in that. Affording compliance with data. I'll talk about that. All right, so courts ready cash gets BOJ approval. All right, so courts 
has this harm that operates in the microfinance sector the Sunday special that we did we talk about this because we saw it in the Sunday special that courts already cash gets the approval to operate in the microcredit sector all right so it is the sixth one of those company that operates in the micro sector to get approval by the boj so this is something this is competition it has already been a part of the sector but the fact that it gets a green light from boj says something about its operation all right now blue star capital jamaica limited which trades as course ready cash was recently approved by the bank of jamaica to operate as a licensed microfinance institution holy all right um what was that locally sorry so be um Blue Star Capital is a member of the Unicom Jamaica Group, uh, which comprises a number of other companies, including furniture and appliance stores, Quartz, Quartz Optical, Ashley Home Store, Lucky Dollar, and Radio Shock. All right, so that's the investment harm. I mean, the loan harm of the group all right and uh, it's a good news that they are now able to operate officially all right officially 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 so nepa approves cygnus real estate development this is a good story this is a good story this is in the jamaica observer so national environmental and planning energy um, agency has approved two applications for cygnus real estate um limited Mami Bay, Mami Bay project in St. Anne. All right, so here it's a good story. This the, the, the story went on to say that um, Cygnus Real Estate just recently bought some piece of land for three billion dollar. All right, about, I guess it was about thirty over thirty um, hectares of land, acres of land. All right and what they did was to sell half of that for 1.9 billion dollar and then the, the 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 other half are both 14 acres all right when the value of the the 14 acres just the other day they are valued some of four point something billion dollar all right so you see where cygnus has made a kill on that investment now inflation we are living in an inflationary period and the value of land the value of property moves up along with inflation so that could be the reason why they get that amount of capital gain on uh, the the land and the property that they bought however what we're seeing now is that the, they, they are planning on developing that other 14 acres that they're maintaining or rem um, retain all right and uh, they have recently gotten the green light from nepa all right to do just that but this will take some time because nepa public portal lists the first application for a complex of 10 to 15 rooms all right so the first application the, what they want to develop is a, is a is a 10 to 15 room um structure while the second application lists a hotel with 250 rooms and nine bungalows with 21 villas so this is a huge project all right so it's not anything small signals real estate making move signals real estate acquired a 29.4 hectare property um acre property for 3.5 billion dollar before selling 15 acres in january 2021 for 1.9 billion dollar the remaining 14.4 acres represent a beachfront investment property that is currently being carried at a 4.88 billion dollar valuation as of august we are continuing working with our international consortium to see the optimum way that will create the value for a particular property in due course i will come back to you to let you know that what the final decision is with respect to particular investment all right so right now they must say yo them get the approval but they are not too keen on what they are gonna do they are still keeping partnership with some um, consortiums overseas all right and they will decide on what to do in the near future so signals real estate has signaled has signed a luxury hospitality partner um with sherman 
uh, Partner Inc. and design and architecture firm Leo A. Daly in June 2022. This came at the same time it had been accepted as a member of the leading hotels of the world, uh, which is the leader of independent luxury hotel. So it seems like Cygnus is about to build a hotel. All right, and they are talking about 250 room property with the 21 bungalows and all these things. So it's a good look for Cygnus Real Estate. Cygnus Real Estate making a lot of moves, a lot of moves, a lot of moves. All right, so Cygnus Real Estate Prospectus had originally outlined four to six million US dollar in the first phase as the investment required over the next 24 months depending on the value creation path as selected it has slated hospitality on the residential villa hotels spa restaurants and condos and apartments for sector and industry cygnus real estate has also begun discussing a uh, discussion and financing options with international investors and uh, financiers all right so it's a good look as i said for cygnus all right real estate that is which is different from signals credit you have to pay keen attention to that all right so we're still scrolling scrolling through the glee on um, the observer this wednesday and now we're up on the story mail pack groups revenue profit fall <laughs> yo i've done stories on mail pack a valid mail pack already we valued meal pack when meal pack was at four dollar as way down as two dollar something we talk about that we have a lot of videos on meal pack a lot of people were rushing into meal pack in the pandemic that was a good time to buy meal pack but it was also a good time to up out of meal pack because there are rough times ahead for meal pack now we see where meal pack revenue is falling off profit is falling off what is happening to meal pack let us get into the story logistics and storage so um and storage solution provider meal pack group limited saw its revenue dip seven percent for the year ending december 31st 2022 revenue dipped at 1.69 billion dollar when compared to 1.8 billion dollar in 2021 the company saw the cost of sales fall at a similar rate as revenue but it incurred an increase in administrative and general expenses costs that dragged operating profit down to 359 billion million dollars compared to 448 million dollars all right so let's just talk about this for a few for a quick few all right we have done a lot of videos about meal packs so we kind of understand the intricacies what's happening um in the meal pack story all right now we see where revenue is falling off back that was expected because in the pandemic there was a a huge run-up of revenue because most things were heading online people became comfortable with the online um lifestyle all right now as the restrictions are his people are going back to their normal way of living and this is impacting um meal pack all right so what we saw um one of the issues that meal pack had in 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 the time of the pandemic was that they were getting so much business that they would have to order extra flight or freight um space all right so meal pack um deliver a lot of things by um plane all right here freight um so they would fly in and, and the packages and all these things but the thing is one of the problem they had was the cost of sales all right the cost of sale was high simple because as the more more revenue came in and they start um leasing more planes they were not filling those planes to capacity all right so as a result of that the, there was a the, the cost of sales was increasing at a faster pace than the revenue all right and that was eating out a, a portion of um the company's profit all right however what we'll find out now is that when revenue is falling back off the cost of sales is expected to fall back off maybe at an even faster pace um than than revenue which would be a good thing all right so your your, your gross profit would look better however what is causing the net profit and the operating profit to shrink is the administrative cost 
all right that was also an issue as a company started to expand what they did was to buy more location all right more offices all right so they were expanding so what they wanted to do was to have a wider reach all right so they started to buy more the 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 the, the locker the start i think they had some more locker to the operation to the distribution network they also added some more office i can't remember if it's one or two offices all right so but what we'll find out is that they will have to put people in these offices or would have to man these offices. now that is the reason why administrative costs has increased so much even as the the the, the revenue is falling back off one of the question i was asking is will they revert all right um to their normal way of operation or will they allow these offices to keep running even though revenue is uh, trending back down i will see where they are deciding to keep these offices open all right so it could be that mail park has um take on some 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 routes delivery route that is not as profitable as yet because they are not well built out and they are not well developed all right so those are some of the issues that the company is facing so taking into account finance costs and taxation meal part net comprehensive income declined from 397 million dollar to 308 million dollar representing a decrease of 23 percent earning per share as a result um reduced to 12 cents from 16 cents so that's the meal pack story depending on how meal pack is selling meal pack could be a good buy this is not financial advice all right so sanctions international airports and here is another good story again so sanctions international airport is reporting a 50 percent year over year growth from 274 point uh, 274 thousand seven hundred terminal passengers for february this performance is below february 2020 figure of 426,700 passengers all right so here um i think they are saying that um passenger flight is our arrival is up to 2019 levels at one quarter that is what that was what happened but here we're seeing where for the february quarter um the the arrivals is are below or is below what it was for 2020 so that's not a good look norman man the international airport recorded a 43 percent increase in air traffic from 78,400 passengers so 112,100 passengers for february but below the 122,600 passengers for february 2020 all right so they are increasing when compared to january this year february is looking better but it is down from what it was in 2020 so that's not a good look i know this will affect some of the um the tourism stock the the stocks that operate in the tourism sector all right so that's not a too good a look it's it's a lukewarm information all right so on the one hand you can say it's good news but on the other hand it's not so good a news police amusement 1921 company limited was the best performer stock in performance stock in february as it rose some 80 percent uh, from four point two four dollars and twenty nine cents to seven dollars and seventy four cents all right so you know that palace amusement did the split thing and you know that with split a lot of people a lot of investors will run into the stock and try to get a part of that capital gain so mfs capital partner limited signals capital um signals credit investment um regions of petroleum um consolidation all of these these are all companies that performed well for this um what's it is a quarter all right uh margarita build down worst performance stock down 28 percent isp service sagicor um select fund um manufacturing and distribution amg packaging and paper company caribbean cream limited margarita bill turcos us share these are the worst performing share in february all right so that's 
it that's it for that that's it for that let us jump right back out of this news and continue all right so this is looking like we are at the end of morning headlines and as i can see we are one hour and 14 minutes into morning headlines this morning all right so this a lot it's a very long morning headlines this morning what has happened is due to the fact that both newspapers are putting out a lot of headlines a lots and lots of headlines these new papers are putting out says a good look for morning headlines all right and with that i will say good luck to you on your trading today all right good luck to you as i said it takes hard work and it's a bit a luck all right so with that you will meet a success all right so yo it's out to you all right cool Baby, what would be good? Do it, ooh, 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 ooh.